you like. Hi everyone, how you doing? It's Saturday and the sun's out and it's all lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, yeah, I'm in a really good mood. Maybe because my machine turned up early. It turned up at like half past two, just after I came off last night. It was absolutely amazing. So I'd paid for it at like 11 o'clock. It was there at half past two. So mm -hmm. I had a little play on it. She's so lovely. I love her. We'll see her later. Um, so yeah, very, very excited about that. Um, so what have we got to go through today with you? Um, might have seen yesterday that we're going to be reopening the shop. We're reopening to the public on the 6th of July. We're going to put a big thing out on Facebook later with um, how it's all going to work and everything. Um, but yeah, we're going to be reopening on the 6th of July. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's really cool that we'll be able to get the shop open to you guys. Um, but we will put a full like statement out on our Facebook page uh, and Insta and stuff later just so that you know exactly what's happening and all. So, um, so that's really cool. Um, let's get back to a tiny bit of normality. Not quite normal, but a little bit of normality. Um, mm -hmm. What else have I got to tell you? The, um, the offer that was in the newsletter starts on Monday. Um, I spent a lot of time last night loading lots more stuff onto the website um, some brand new stuff so um, it's definitely worth having a little look particularly with the offer the newsletter offer um, so yeah that's um, that starts on Monday um, mm -hmm. so yeah do have a little look on Monday it, um, it won't you can't use the offer before then so it'll be from Monday I think it's nine o'clock it starts okay um, so I've got some things I wanted to show you actually that came yesterday that are so scrummy um, so we've got some, um, you know, I know we do the Moda Grunge um, charm packs, but we've had some of the Bella solids come in, actually. So we've got cream. Well, they're actually called eggshell, but they're, they're like, like a lovely. Um, oh, hang on. I'm just going to turn the light on. I just realised there's no lights on. <laughs> Let me just put the lights on. Oh, there we go. That might help a, wee, a weeny bit. <laughs> um, so these, it's called eggshell, but it's the most beautiful sort of soft, creamy colour between sort of cream and white. And um, these are 10.95, so brilliant if you want background fabric pre-cuts. We've also got in a beautiful red as well, love which would be good for Christmas if you're doing Christmas stuff. And then this one, which is really funky actually, it's all greys, lots of different shades of grey, fifty shades of grey, not quite, but no. <laughs> There's um, I think it's four shades of four or five shades of grey. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, well, there's actually six shades in there, but repeated. So you get like six of everything, okay? And then we've got a red one. So they're on the website and uh, um, so it's in fabric um, and then there's a whole pre-cut section and then they've got their own section now, charm packs, okay? Um, there's also some new layer cakes that came in yesterday that have gone on and some jelly rolls as well. But also these, I thought I'd show you these because these are just amazing. Now, these are a bit of a considered purchase because they are, um, they're not cheap. This is a complete kit. These are the Moda Quilt Kits. This one's called Sarah's Story, which is like the most beautiful sampler quilt. And we've got very limited stock of these. I think there's only like two of these, two of another, and then one each. There's four designs in total. But I thought I'd just show you a couple of them. This is called Sarah's Story. Um, and it's just the most beautiful sample quilt, but I'm going to just gently open the box for you so you can see. You literally get everything you could possibly need to make the quilt. So you've got a full pattern, you've got more stuff there, and then you get all your fabrics. Can you see? There's just loads and loads and loads and loads of fabrics mm -hmm. in there to make the full kit. Okay. Um, and then there's this one, which again, I'm going to show you, which is just, so that makes 51 by 64 inch quilt. So a really, really nice size quilt. Well, what are you pulling the face for, Groobs? What's going on? No? Nothing. No? no? Well, you're pulling a right funny face at me then. And this one's called My Redwood Garden. I've only got four of these. But if I show you this, hopefully you can see it. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, you've got red work in there, you've got piecing, you've got a plique, you've got all sorts. They are expensive, okay? They are... Okay, can I open this one very carefully? There we go. So, so you can see inside. So you have got everything you need. You've got your red work threads, you've got papers, you've got a massive... I mean, that's the whole pattern in there. You've got a huge, huge pattern in there, okay? And then you've got all of the fabrics if I just carefully lift that up you can see you've got all the fabrics you could possibly need in there okay 
it's it's stunning they are very very limited okay but this one makes it makes a big quilt this one so that's something like 90 or something 90 by 90 or 80 by 80 uh yeah 80 by 80 so it's a really big kit there are two other designs as well they're on a website go and have a little look um you know if you want to treat yourself but know that everything is there you won't need anything else i just i don't know if drew can get up close up on this one i just love can you see like so you've got like red work designs to do which are then bordered and stuff and then you've got little pieced blocks but then you've got the most beautiful little plique can you see these little bunnies jump in in a plique as well and the little house i mean that is, it's just delicious absolutely delicious sure that's what price are they so this one is 225 pounds for the mode of red work garden which like i said is is quite a lot of money but it's everything you could need in there um I can't remember how much the Sarah Story one is. They're on the website. I'm really sorry. I can't remember how much they are. But I've got four of these, two of the Sarah Story. There's one called Northport, which is a quite a more modern one, but in the most beautiful reds and blues. And then there's another one called um, Clover Meadow, which is all... Um, we had some of the Clover Meadow fabric in the shop, actually. It's all those lovely sort of purples and greens with, like, violets and clovers and all, all over it. That's massive. I've only got one of those and it's absolutely massive, the, the quilt. It comes out, I think it's like 100 inches by 95, something like that. It's it's huge quilt. It's the king size one. Um, but they are on the website under the um, the Moda Quilt Kit section, the ones that we've got. So I just thought I'd show you those because I was very excited when they came in because I was like, oh my God, they're so pretty. They're so, so pretty. I need them. I need them all. <laughs> I don't need them don't need them all because I don't need that many quilts but I want them all <laughs> Catherine says she can't find them on the website so they are in um, into fabric and then not uh, they into the section that says jelly rolls layer cakes cakes charm packs in that section and then there should be a little box there that says um, Moda quilt kits okay so yeah so they're in the pre-cut section and then you've, you've got us in the pre-cut section it's um there's charm packs layer cakes charm packs have got a category layer cakes have got a category jelly rolls have got a category and then there's a mode of quilt kits category there okay but if you search redwood garden it'll take you take you directly to them or it should do if our website's working correctly <laughs> but uh groups where's your phone i'll show you on the, i'll show you on the phone i can show show your group's phone so Right, okay, so I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to go to White Gecko. This is where I find that all the work that I did last night hasn't worked, has not it? White Gecko Craft Lounge. Uh, Shans has put a link into it. Did you put a link? Brilliant. Thanks, lovely. But right, okay, so I don't know if Drew can just go close to this. So just for anybody who hasn't picked up the link. So you go to Menu and Shop. Okay, and then into Fabric. And then if you go into this section that's called jelly rolls, layer cakes and quilt kits there. And then you've got different categories, charm packs. So all of our charm packs are now in there. All of our jelly rolls are in that section, all of the layer cakes. And then there's a section here that says mode of quilt kits. And then you can click into that. And there's that's the clover one, the clover meadow. There's the redwood garden, 209.95. There you go. That's the Northport one, which I haven't got. And that's the Sarah story okay so like i said very very limited stock on those um give drew his phone back oh my god he let me have his phone <laughs> uh, very limited stock but there are a few on there um so yeah they are scrummy 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 anyway what are we doing today who's there say hello people so <laughs> we've like got <coughs> marion we've got caroline <clears throat> sorry catherine sean carrie hi everyone uh, andy we've got Linda Head, perfect. Wendy, loads of people. Lovely, 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 fabulous. So, I've just realised I've got to put the challenge post up for the little draw. I'll do that as soon as I come off. Okay, I'll put the challenge post up. Um, so we're going to do some foundation piece in today. Okay, and we're going to do this little one. I really like this block. It's called Circle of Geese. Um, so it's like flying geese, but done in a circle, which you could only really get through foundation piecing you it would be very very difficult to piece this um 
so it's not my pattern it's a block that I've I've found um, uh, I will put a link up to the pattern but the thing I liked about the pattern is so you can see it here they've done I don't know if you can see their little version was all rainbow obviously I've done mine to go in with the isolation quilt but you could do it in absolutely anything and I like the fact that they give you two templates they do a clockwise spin so that the the geese are going clockwise and then they do a counterclockwise so that they're going the other way so you could actually put if you did lots of these blocks put them together and they would look like they're turning in you know turning in different ways which would be I think a really nice effect they also give you a little bit of a how to put it together but also a bit of a coloring sheet as well so you could actually plan out what you're doing so I will pop a link on as well okay so that you guys can can print this out like I said it's not my pattern it was a free download but um, I will I'll get I'll put that on our Facebook page so that you can um, or you can email email me direct or email the shop directly just at shop at whitegeckoevents.co.uk and I can send you the PDF um, but it's not obviously it's, it was a free download so it's not one that we can sell okay so I'm going to go with uh, counterclock clockwise this time because I did a clockwise one this time that, for that so I'm going to go counterclockwise now if any of you haven't got them and you're you like foundation piece in we've got more of the add a quarter rulers in we we're out of stock for a little while but we've had them back in so they are on our website as well we've got the six inch ones which are the the pink ones um which are they some of the, they've done them in pink because some of the money goes to breast cancer care and we've got a couple of the the 12 inches left as well so i'm going to use some stitch and tear because you know i like stitch and tear for paper uh, for foundation piece in mm -hmm. you can of course just print this out and do it directly onto copy paper if you want to um if you want to do it onto copy paper that's fine you just means you have to obviously take all the paper out um but all i'm going to do is just draw this out okay so just using a pencil because you're not ever going to see it it's all going to be on the back obviously don't use a Frixon pen because there's going to be lots of ironing and you'll lose all these lines <laughs> okay and all I'm doing oh, try not to move it reline that back up all I would do is draw this out okay so in true blue Peter, Peter fashion this one I've done earlier so I've drawn all that out okay and now I would absolutely write onto the stitch, uh, the, the stitch and tear, what the numbers and what they're supposed to be. It makes your life so much easier. So on the pattern, hopefully you can see, it says that number one is a goose triangle. Number two is background fabric. Number three is background fabric and like that. So I'm going to write onto my stitch and tear because it saves having to keep referring back to the pattern. Okay, so I'm just write onto that. So nine is background eight is background, seven, I'm going to just call it a GT, goose triangle, six is background, five is background, four is a goose triangle, three is background, two is background, and number one is a goose triangle. Okay, so I've got that on there, so I've basically just transferred the pattern over from the, from the sheet onto there. But like I said, you can do it onto paper if you want, I just I hate picking out the um, the paper afterwards. It drives me insane. And I like stitch and tear. I think it's more stable. It helps keep the block together. It's brilliant. So, where am I doing first? I need some back. Uh, my first one then is, number one, is a goose triangle. Okay, so I'm going to start with, what have I got? A little piece of this one. Okay, so I'm going to use a little piece of this one. So we're going to put the fabrics on the back of this because we're going to, you need to be able to see the lines to stitch. So, and I know we've done um, foundation piecing before, but I think it's just worth going through these initial bits. So, so the very first one, I want to put them wrong sides to the back of the foundation piece in like that. And I'm going to turn it over and make sure that the whole of that shape, so the whole of number one, can you see number one there and there and there is covered by fabric okay be generous with your fabric put more on than you think you're going to need 
okay because how it flips out and turns and stuff and i think i've said this to you guys before how it flips out and turns can be really deceptive so it's it won't be wasteful because these bits that i cut off eventually are using another block but when you're starting out be much more generous than you think you're going to you with the fabric you think you're going to be so i'm just going to pop a pin just there just to hold that in place okay so the first thing i want to do is trim off all of this excess fabric here between number one and number two okay because this will be the first line that we stitch so i'm going to i tend to use a nice i used to tend to use a mechanical pencil as well because it kind of scores the stitch and tear a weeny bit and it makes this folding back much easier so i'm going to fold back the stitch and tear between one and two like that okay nice thing about the quarter of an inch is, is they've got this little ridge on them here okay so it slides up and butts against that fab uh, that stitch and tear and then you're going to trim off the excess there okay you can see now i've just got my little quarter inch seam allowance like that so my number two is background fabric so i need a piece of background fabric Okay. Oh, what have I done there? I've got a pin stuck on me. There we go. So I'm going to grab a piece of background fabric, and again, I'm going to be mega generous with it. I'm just going to hack a piece off like that. And I want to put them right side. So flip this over, and this, this is where number two is here. Okay, so I'm working on this line here that I've just trimmed off. And I'm going to put on. Let me just actually, I did hack that a bit too badly. Let me just give myself a vaguely straight line. <laughs> I'm going to put them right sides together and line up on that bit that I've just trimmed off like that. OK. Hold them steady, flip it back over and pin it into place. And the first line we're going to stitch is this one here, the one between one and two. So I'm going to start here and sew down to there. OK, so over to the sewing machine. <laughs> My new sewing machine. I love her. She's amazing. Um, yeah. It's so quiet. I'm so used to my little brother now, who's so noisy. It's so quiet. It's brilliant. I love it. Okay. So, I'm going to drop the needle down right on that point between one and two on the start of the line. Okay. And then we're going to stitch down that line. I would reduce your stitch length a little bit, okay? I would take it down to two, two, maybe 1.82. You want it to be, if you're using paper, go down even smaller, go down to like 1.5 because it helps perforate the paper and you'll get it out. But because I'm gonna leave the stitch and tear in, I've gone down to two, okay? And I'm just gonna stitch along that line there, okay? And Louis. stop when I get to the end. Sorry, Louise says to use sound machines. Do I what, sorry? Sell machines. We don't, I'm afraid, no. Uh, we, we don't have um, the, the room to stock anything. Um, Jay, if you're local to us um, or within South Wales, uh, J&B Sewing, they've got a, a shop in Newport and they've got one in Cardiff. Um, that's where I, I bought this one from. And the service is absolutely amazing. They're really, really good customer service. Um, and like, if there's any problems or anything, not hopefully they will have, but they've been really good about sorting stuff. We had our big Daphne, our big long arm quilter about it. Uh, and when we had a little problem with it, we'd, been, we'd set it up wrong. They came out, sorted it all out for us. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, I can't recommend them enough for sewing machines. They're fab people. And um, yeah, definitely. But go to, go, if you're not local to us, go to your local stockist, okay? Um, and have a little look okay so I've just sewn down that line between one and two okay so I can take that pin out and I'm just going to gently press that out okay like that so it's nice and flat like that okay the thing I like about foundation piecing is that um, it's you get incredibly accurate um, points and piecing because you're just following the drawn lines okay right so my next one then is number three which is here okay so that means I'm going to be sewing this line here between two and three 
okay but it actually comes right the way across one as well so this is my next one this line here so first thing you're going to do is fold back on that line that you're going to stitch like that is everybody with me so far are you all get okay with this and then add the quarter of an inch butt up against the stitch and tear and cut off that quarter of an inch are you all okay everybody with me Thanks, hopefully yeah. any questions or comments there Dre? christine asks is it heavy it is quite a heavy machine it's not one that i'll take out to retreats or like guild or anything it is quite heavy i mean i need to get a trolley for it um i mean i can lift it quite easily um but it is quite a heavy machine yes um i think i'd probably just carry my little brother around if uh, for ease um for little things um you know for like a day's class or something so um but i don't care that she's heavy she's lovely <laughs> she's fab so um i know that piece isn't going to be oh yeah it will that piece will be big enough so i'm going to just give myself a straightest edge because i really did hack that it wasn't very neat at all so because we're now going to be doing number three here okay i want to cover that piece there i've trimmed off my quarter of an inch okay i'm going to flip it back over and i'm going to line up right sides together so this is number three i mean i'm hoping you can see this but i don't know if you will let me just see if i can put if i put it on white whether you'll see it better can you see this this is number three here okay so I've trimmed off, so I've put in my fabric on so that when it flips out, it will cover number three, okay? I was hoping by putting it against a light background, you'd be able to see it a bit better. So again, I'm going to flip that over, pop a pin in. And if you want to check that it's going to work before you stitch it, if you put a pin on that line and then flip it out, you'll be able to see whether it's all covered or not. So I'm going to a pin in there and then I can stitch down that is going to cover that's fine mm -hmm. okay actually I'm just gonna I will I am gonna move it up because it's not quite gonna cover there we go that's better and now I'm gonna stitch down that line there okay while I'm stitching Drew who's there anybody got any comments or questions uh Kerry says you teach me all the bits of um I don't use on my machine oh <laughs> Good, good. I'm glad you're uh, learning to get to use your machine. That's fab. Um, I mean, yeah, this one's got a ridiculous amount of stitches and all sorts of stuff. Apparently it stitches like sideways and all sorts of things. I haven't had time to play with it yet. We've been so busy. I need a day just to go through the manual and, and play with it and see. Okay, any other comments there? Anybody else chattering away today? Uh... Tina says the rip and tear do you sell it in the shop we do we sell it in the shop uh, it should be on the website as well lovely stitch and tear it'll be in the haberdashery section okay it, so sorry Linda asked what time did you stop sewing on your machine last night oh I actually quite early because I had loads of stuff to do on the laptop so it's probably for, well early for me it was probably about half past nine ish half past nine I stopped um I'd made the block and uh prepped for today and then I had loads of stuff to do on the laptop so yeah however I've got lots of stuff to prep for next week so I'm gonna have a whole day sewing tomorrow I'm hoping it, I know it's rot rotten but I hope it's gonna rain tomorrow so I've got an excuse not to go out <laughs> okay so I've ironed that one out and now we're gonna be looking at number four okay so the line between number three and four here so it's this line here that I'm we're focusing on now I'm gonna fold that back on that line like that use my little adder quarter ruler to butt up against the stitch and tear and take off that excess okay now little bits like that you're never going to use but pieces like that i would absolutely keep because that will do the smaller bits on the next block okay so number four it says gt so that's another um another whatchamacallit another goose triangle so i'm going to take a piece of this color now but you could play with your colours, you know, take, play with your colours and see what you fancy. I'm going to put these right sides together. Now that piece is way too big, so I will just chop that down just a weeny bit. There we go. So I'm going to put them right sides together like that. Flip it back over. 
and pin in place. Okay, so back to the sewing machine and we stitch down that line. So we're going to stitch down the line between three and four. <coughs> Did you all see that Sean put a post up about what's happening next week? So we've got lots of bits happening next week. Um, I need to find the lock stitch. I haven't found the lock stitch yet on it. I need to work out how that works. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do some Japanese knot bags on Monday. Uh, Tuesday I'm going to do some bunt crochet with you again, but some crochet bunting, uh, which is a really nice little project and be like fab out in the garden this time of year and stuff. And again, great for using up odd bits of wool that you've got left. Uh, Wednesday we're going to do a block of the week, but I'm going to do dressed and plate with you. Uh, and show you how can you can use your wedge rulers as well as normal Dresden rulers. Bless you. Um, oh, what's that? I keep getting. Oh, I just made a hole in my dress. There's something really sharp in my little pocket. It's made a hole in my dress. That's really annoying. Um, Thursday, Sarah's going to do some fabric ba uh, fabric bowl covers with you, which are again brilliant for if you're eating outside or you want to pop. You know, keep things covered. They're really, really, really cute and funky and really quick to do as well, which is nice. Um, what am I doing Friday? Am I doing Scrappy Heart Log Cabin on Friday or is that Saturday? You always forget what you're doing on Friday. I always forget the Friday one. I can't remember. Can't for the life of me remember what I'm doing now. Sean, let me know. <laughs> Sean, let me know. I already read it earlier as well. It's gone completely out of my brain. I know I'm doing scrappy, I'm going to do, someone asked for a tutorial on scrappy log cabins. Um, you know, the quilt that we had behind that the pattern's for sale. Um, yeah, we've got, um, I'm doing, going to do a tutorial on how to put that together. Yes, please. Um, I can't remember. Maybe Sean hasn't put it out yet. Maybe I'm giving you all news before she's put it out. I can't remember. Maybe I'm just thinking she she showed it us. <laughs> no, it, she did do it. She did oh. a scrappy heart log uh, cabin on Friday. Yeah. And then you doing a table stand. Oh, on the iPad table stand on. Um, yeah, so a tablet, not table, tablet, a tablet, oh, ca tablet stand on Saturday, which again is a really nice little make to do with um, to do. So, uh, so can I get use that peanut? That's not going to be big enough. So. Um, yeah, see, I'm terrible. I'm fine with the beginning of the week, and by the end of the week, my brain just goes blah. <laughs> so, another piece of uh, background fabric. There we go. So, now we're going to be doing. So, I've trimmed off between four and five. Okay, like that. So, now I want to make it's a piece of background fabric for number five. So, I'm going to pop this one. Where's the line there? Okay, like that. Flip it over. Just like we did the others. I'm going to take you through the whole block. I know it's a bit repetitive at the mm -hmm. moment, but I want to show you how to trim it all up and all afterwards. So I will take you through this, okay? And I'm going to stitch between four and five. And you just keep building up like this, okay? You just work through your numbers, um, making sure that your fabric's big enough to cover the piece that, um, that you, that's coming next. So we've done foundation pieces before, haven't we? We did it, uh, we did the star, you know, with the, the little block that sort of goes, a frame that goes round it. Um, but this one's a little bit more sort of abstract, I think, when the blocks are going together. Um, so, who's there? Who's having a chat? What are you up to, guys? Marie said bowl, ho bowl holders are great to do. Uh, I use mine all the time. Ah, oh, fab. Yeah, they, they look a really nice little project. When Sarah was showing me, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a really cool idea. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots of this fabric, but I'm going to trim it off now. So now we're going to work between, we've done number five, that's covered. So now it's number six, which is this one here. So again, the line between five and six, that line there. I know I'm repeating this a lot, guys, mm -hmm. but it's it can be quite confusing when you first start. It's incredibly quick once you get the hang of it. But it can be quite confusing when you first start. So I'm going to take that bit off there to get my quarter of an inch. But I'm also just going to take off this fabric here so I can use it rather than cut another piece. Okay, just getting rid of that 
excess there and then I've got a big piece there that I can use <laughs> okay because I don't that that's all just overhanging okay so number six there we go again you see that these little bits aren't but that's big enough to use like as a number two on the next block so number six get all this out of the way it's going to go along here so right sides together like that along the edge flip it over like that and I'm going to be stitching this time from here all the way along to here okay so just pin it down low out of the way so nothing moves but the pins aren't in your way and we're going to ow don't stab yourself <laughs> I'm get my finger out of the way so I'm going to st pin a uh, stitch from there to there right the way across now okay so any comments who's there who's chattering away no, not the moment. nobody oh. are you all just concentrating or if i bored you silly and you've all uh, all gone away <laughs> or are you all on the website checking out those quilt kits <laughs> If you've booked on to any of the classes, I will be in touch with the Bargello people on Monday uh, just to let you know fabric requirements and stuff, okay? So I'll be in touch and then the rest of the kits will be going out at the end of the week for the, the other classes. So if you have booked on to those, um, they are, there are a few spaces left, okay? So um, you, do, you might, you might want to grab those quite quickly because there's, there's not much left at all, all right? There we go. So iron that one out and you can see how the, how these little geese are now starting to form okay so last couple so this is between six and seven so we're going to fold that back get all this out of the way so i'm not cutting up bits that i shouldn't cut off that excess so i've got my quarter inch seam allowance and then this number seven is a gt which is a goose triangle so Let's go for a colour. Where's have I got a bit of navy here? Oh, I thought it was all old. yes, here we go. Got a little bit of navy, which is what I'm going to use in that one. So again, we're going to line those up right sides together along that edge. Flip it over. Ninderess is uh, the pattern from a book you have. It's not a book, no, it was a um it was a download. It was I found it on Pinterest and it was a free download. Um, I think it was on Craftsy, which I know has gone now, um, but I do have the PDF. It was a freebie one. I will find the link for it um, and pop it onto Facebook, or you can email us directly, shop at whitegeckoevents.co.uk, and I can email you a copy of it, okay? But it's, it's a freebie one because it's not my pattern. It was just a free download. So I'm just going to go with between six and seven. And we're nearly there, we're nearly finished. Can you hear how quiet she is? I'm so excited. I'm such a, such a child. I get so excited about things like that. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Bless you. You're sneezy today, groups, with your hay fever. So okay last couple so this is a nice big piece here so i'm going to go between seven and eight so that's up here there we go bend back the stitch and tear and this technique is the same for any foundation piece and it's just about following the numbers okay and making sure that the numbers are um you do it in order okay so if I put that piece on like that, you think, oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. But when I flip it out, it's not going to... It's really difficult for you guys to see the pencil lines. Can you see it's not going to hit the pencil lines there? Okay. Sometimes it's quite deceptive. It feels like it's going to work and it doesn't. But if I put it against this straight edge there and flip it, it will cover. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put it against that straight edge instead. So I'm going to go from there to there. So sometimes it's thinking about the shape of your pieces. I, I would certainly suggest when if you, you've never done this technique before and you want to have a go at it, start with much, much bigger pieces. OK, because it's, there's nothing more disheartening than stitching it all down and then realising when you 
iron it out, it doesn't fit and it's you've missed a bit. Or not noticing that you've and then doing two or three more other pieces. And then when you start, when you go to cut it out, you realize you've got a hole somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Done that a few times. Okay, so back to the machine. And between eight and nine. Marie's just said that she's gonna go back to work properly on Monday. Oh, but bless at you. least I'll have, um, so I'll have you all to watch and catch up when I get home. Absolutely, yeah, you can catch up with us when you get home or you can uh, watch us on YouTube. I've actually got quite a few to put on YouTube, actually I haven't done any of this week's yet because uh, we've been silly, silly busy getting ready for a chander and orders and things, so yeah. It's, uh... Okay, one last one, so that was between seven and eight and then iron that one out like that. And then last little bit is between eight and nine. So it's this long line here. Okay, so I'm going to fold that back. Fold it back. Butt up my add a quarter ruler. And these are absolutely, if you're, if you're going to do foundation piecing and you haven't got one, they are absolutely invaluable. I mean, you can use a normal ruler and just measure a quarter an inch. But the fact that that like clicks in and locks it's just it's just brilliant it makes life so so much easier so much easier so i need another piece of uh backing fabric like that okay and then i'll flip that over the dog is being loopy out there today my dog is going absolutely loopy in the garden i don't know what she's up to she keeps looking through the patio doors at me and like bouncing around. She's been crazy. Okay, so that one's lined up. I'm going to flip it over like that, like that. You might have seen as well that Sean um, last night um, put on the charities. We've managed to get them all linked with Just Giving so that we can donate. We did unfortunately have to redraw one of the charities. So the Tortoise Sanctuary um, doesn't um doesn't use just giving and there was no way of us um actually being able to allow you guys to to sponsor them as part of one of the charities we we spent days trying to sort it out um we will do something for them though um maybe once we've reopened we'll do something within the shop where people can actually pay us directly and we can pay them but unfortunately just giving was um they're not linked they're, they're a charity that's not linked with just giving and it's it was so difficult it just there was no way of doing it so we did another redraw we redrew we put all the names back in a hat and um blood bike wales came out and they they do do just give in so um we're gonna adopt them as the the other one um so uh, we have we have had our first donation as well i noticed come through which is amazing um and yeah you can you can start donate you can start donating if you would like to sponsor us that would be amazing we start on july the 1st which isn't long we'll start actually actually doing this now <laughs> okay right so i'm just going to iron that last one out like that mm -hmm. okay and now i can trim it all down and then you'll be able to hopefully see how the block comes together so everything you can see that everything hopefully you can see on there if i go go close to the light you can see that the fabric is right the way over this second line here okay so this is basically my seam allowance because you join the blocks mm -hmm. on this internal square and this then is my seam allowance so you're going to trim everything off to this outside line okay so i'm going to pop that down like that Ooh went wonky then because we're trying to not knock the camera <laughs> okay so i'm just using my ruler i'm going to line up my ruler on the on that pencil line like that and just trim off all that excess and obviously these pieces i would you know big pieces like that i'd keep for the for the next one little bits like that i i wouldn't bother i've got so many scraps i don't know <laughs> anything under about two inches square i i get rid of now Who's there? Anybody having a chat? Uh, Any comments? Taryn said, like, poor dog is still drowsy from her op. 
Oh, um, bless. I'm sure she'll be mm. bouncing soon. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, well, it's just nuts. Pardon? Our dog's just weird. <laughs> She's weird. She's the most neurotic dog in the world. She really is. Crazy creature. So you can see when I turn that round now, and I've trimmed it all down, you can see those um, geese appeared. Okay, because this one was looking a bit odd earlier because it had ex excess fabric and all. But you can say, and you can see how neat they are. They're all exactly the same size. They've all got their points and everything, which is one of the things I love about this. It's so easy to do. So you would make four of these. Okay, so you would make four identical blocks, and then they, when they go together, that you just turn them. Okay, so obviously this one's a clockwise one, not an anti-clockwise. But I would just, you would do that. And then that, and then that, and then that, like that, okay? I'm going to show you the back of this one. So, there's one little thing when you're joining them together to remember, is you would put a mm -hmm. pin through, so imagine I was joining this line here, okay? Put them right sides together, I would pop a pin through like that on the line, and make sure, can you see that's not hitting that line? So I would wiggle that one up, until my pin ooh, until my pin comes through on the line like that okay and i would do that over two or three you know spaces along the line you then stitch down hopefully you can see on this bit here you stitch down on the line like that okay i iron my seams open when i'm joining um with stitch and tear it reduces the bulk and can you see like here where you've got lots of little pieces all crossing over you end up with quite a few seams you know like little bulky bits so by pressing them open it just helps when you're quilting it later okay and you'd make four blocks join them in pairs and then join the two pairs together okay like that so that's called circle of geese um i really like it i really like foundation piece and it's one of my more favored methods um it's a little bit, you know, you tend to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards quite a lot. But I love the effects that you can get with it. I think you get really, really precise piecing. Um, they go together really nicely. As long as you've been careful with your drawing out, it works brilliantly. It works really, really well. So, um, any questions or comments there, Drew? Anything I can um, tell anybody? Tina says, can't wait to get my crochet orders uh, complete so I can crack on with some sewing. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Uh, Linda Pinch said as well, um, we'll do that block and mine. Yeah, oh, you're a bit of an expert, Linda Pinch, on uh, foundation piece, and you should see her foundation piece um, quilt that she did. All the different, all the different star flowers, was it flowers or stars of America? All the st there's one for each state. Stunning, absolutely stunning quilt. In fact, if you can pop a picture onto the, the Gigglers page, that would be amazing, Linda, if you've got a picture there. Um, so yeah, really lovely. She's she's good at foundation piecing. So any other questions or anything there? Any uh, comments? And says I love that block. Yeah, I really like that this one as well. It's one of my one of the favourite ones to do actually. Like Linda that. said stars. Stars, cool. I knew it was stars or flowers. I knew there was so, there was something, but yeah, it's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful block. Really lovely. So. But no, it's not it. Cool. Okie doke, are you all out in the sunshine today? Is that what it is? Hardly any of you were there. <laughs> How many are watching? 40. 40, oh, yeah, see, we normally have about 60, 65, so uh, you're obviously out shopping and gardening today, aren't you? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's it for today, this week, in fact. Um, we will be back on Monday. Um, well, I'll be back on Monday at 1 o'clock. Um, remember, there's the offer that goes on the website. Um, remember, there's the Zoom class. This is a couple of spaces left. If you want to do the Bargello, I think there's one space left on that one. Um, you need to sort of do that quite quickly. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Yeah. Don't forget the beautiful kits. Go and have a little look. They're yummy. Uh, there's lots and lots. I put lots of new stuff on the website last night as well. There's loads of new white on whites have gone on. Um, there's new jelly rolls, all sorts. Um, so, yeah, spent spent a couple of hours doing that last sorry. night. And just said, sorry, how do we get the pattern? The pattern for this. Um, I will put a link onto Facebook. Um, or if you drop me an email um, to our normal to the shop email, which is shop at white gecko events with an S 
.co.uk, I can email you one out, okay? Because um, it was a free download. I've downloaded the PDF, but I will put a link so you can do it yourself or drop, if you can't, can't do it for some reason, drop me an email and I'll send you one, okay? Anything else there? Nope. Nope. Okie doke. Fab. Well, thanks for joining me. Have a lovely, lovely Sunday. It's Father's Day, isn't it? So, oh, this is me saying I was going to sew all day. I'm going to have to be nice to my husband, aren't I? It's Father's Day. Drew said he's going to cook, though, for him, which is nice. So, um, so yeah, we do have to, do, have to do something with uh, for Father's Day, haven't we, tomorrow? So I better get some sewing into this afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to go and do some Barry deliveries first, and then I'll get some done tonight. Um, and I will see you on Monday at one o'clock. Um, I think I've told you everything. There will be an announcement about shop reopening going on Facebook. So please do have a little look at that. OK, um, I'll speak to you soon. See you Monday. Bye.